An auspicious day at Malala. It's the debut of Australia's new premier open-wheeler formula, Formula Holden. Cars lining up on the grid. And on the front row, in pole position, Rowan Onslow in a rolled RT20. Alongside him, Mark McLaughlin from Tasmania in an Elfin. Second row, John Briggs, Carnival 9, then Arthur Abrahams in fourth spot, followed by Bap Romano from Queensland in fifth position. Peter Glover of X Formula 2 is in sixth position, followed by Elwyn Bigley in seventh. Our own Neil Crompton, position eight. Brett Fisher and Tony Blanche round out the top ten. Fantastic start to the new Formula, Formula Holden. They're off and racing. Getting away very quickly was Mark McLaughlin, who runs down the outside and actually beats pole sitter Rowan Onslow into the first corner. Down to the S's now the left-hander. And well, McLaughlin clear at this stage. We also have Neil Crompton in the field today, our own alarm frost. There he goes, car number seven. Arthur Abraham slotting into third spot through the first corner, followed by John Briggs, then Romano, Crompton, Glover, Bigley. McLaughlin and looking pretty sharp here as he comes out. Just look at them getting the power on that. Very much sideways, working that short straight away. Oh, very twitchy around this uh, tight circuit, these cars. Enormous amount of torque powered by uh, V6 Holden engine, hence the uh, category Formula Holden. But it's an exciting prospect, exciting day for motor racing and one of Australia's premier open wheeler men from uh, the not too distant past, John Smith, joining us for this race. Smithy, why aren't you down there? Actually, yeah, I'm just starting to think that looking at from here. Why aren't I down there as well? Good to see this, ca this uh, category back again, isn't it? Well, that's right. I reckon it's a terrific category. It's got a lot of potential. It's the early days with it, of course, but I can just see that uh, it's going to go on to a lot better things. Lightning move by Peter Glover puts him up into third spot behind these two. McLaughlin leads. Onslow second. Glover up to third. Pretty good effort coming from the fourth row of the grid as he did. Actually, it's a good drive for, for Glover as well because he's had a very bad accident about uh, two weeks ago and uh, broke his leg, and I think he's uh, to come Whoa, back. Oh, there goes Onslow. Onslow's around sideways. He's the defending gold star champion in Australia, last year's Formula 2 winner. Now he'll have uh, the task ahead of him because McLaughlin has really opened that up, moving down the back straight. I don't think he's going to get started again, Onslow. Peter Glover now moves to second spot. There you can see the gap from uh, our race leader. They go past the pits. Well, that was coming out of that uh, very, very sharp turn at the end of the pit straight, where Onslow came to grief. So the scrap back behind him, though, is sensational. Arthur Abraham's there in the maroon-coloured car, number 19. Crompton also in that pack, along with John Briggs in car number 9, followed by Bab Romano. Crompton, what's that? Abraham's car has gone amiss there. And the other two are through, Crompton included. That's him in the multicolored Dulux entry. Car number seven. That's uh, without doubt. Let's have a look at the replay here of. Uh... Yeah, off on the dirt there at the bottom of the pit straight, Onslow. That's where. Oh, it's car number eight. That's Bat Romano. He's gone as well. Well, the two white cars have, uh, have disappeared. We pick up on car number seven, the Dulux Auto Color car with. Um, our own Neil Crompton doing the driving today. He's going to campaign in the uh, Formula Holden Gold Star Series for the year. And I think, John, you'd agree, a little bit of a difference out of a tour into an open wheel with a bit of grunt. It's a huge difference, Mike. Actually, you don't realise it. One of the, the major differences is just the braking. The, the, the sensational braking abilities of a car of this nature uh, compared to a touring car. Uh, Neil's been finding it quite difficult to come to grips with it. He hasn't done uh, too bad at this stage. I think he's up to third. What do they say, uh, John Smith? Gentle on the throttle, quick on the brake. Exactly right. And I think, uh, yeah, Neil's doing a remarkably good job. He was a very tentative person in practice, but he's come good in the race. And uh, it just goes to show a bit of uh, ability in anything uh, comes out, no matter what you're driving. Well, he's come from eighth position on the grid. He's now up running third. The greatest thing that Compton's got going for him, perhaps, is the fact that there's, there's a little bit of caution on his side. Yeah, exactly that. He's, uh, he's just saw Bat Romano have a spin before because these cars, uh, particularly early in the piece, they're quite hard tyres and they don't get onto the pace really until about two or three laps. So 
as we saw with BAP uh, before, it, it, uh, it plays to be quite uh, easy on the car early until they get everything up to wor working temperature. I'm going to tell you, he might have had an ace up his sleeve earlier that uh, Peter Brock and the Nissan team would have warmed his tyres if they had those special tyre warmers. Then, of course, all the cars sat at the grid for about 15 minutes while the marching girls performed and the heat went out of the tyres. So he's just back, back to normal with everyone else. Actually, it was a pretty smart move. It paid off. It wasn't bad at all. Race leader continues to be Mark McLaughlin from Tasmania. He's just gone past the start finish line. Peter Glover is in second place. That's Peter Glover on screen now, car number 13. Neil Crompton's running third, followed by car number nine, John Briggs from Queensland in fourth spot. Peter Glover hasn't raced for uh, a couple of seasons competitively, but of course he's a former back-to-back -back winner of Formula Two uh, championships. Actually, he was being involved early in the piece with the development of these cars with Brian Sheed, the designer and builder of that particular car. And uh, they were the driving force behind this uh, Formula Holden and uh, yeah, full marks to them, I think. As we said earlier, Formula Holden, powered exclusively by Holden's new generation Commodore V6 engine, suitably modified for competition by ACL. And Block set up costing about $9,700 which they point out is about a, a third of the cost of a Mondial engine. And you would know something about those, John? Yes, just towards the uh, end of the Mondial period, I think engines were costing the vicinity about $25,000. So uh, they are remarkably cheap to, to the initial purchase of the car. We're uh, at this stage unknown to actually the, the figure out the running cost of the cars, but the initial purchase is quite good. Punching at about 300 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. The will drop to this stage as uh, John Briggs, I think it is, closing on him. I think one of the other uh, noticeable things with these cars is the phenomenal torque produced by the engine. They're, they have the same amount of torque that's produced by uh, the Formula 3000 DFV Cosworth, and, uh, and it was a former Formula 1 engine, and, uh, and uh, something like this uh, to drive it would be fantastic. Uh, to be honest, just watching them on the box here, I, I don't mind... Uh, stating that I wouldn't mind having a shot at it. Yeah. Well, Automotive Components Limited have done a pretty good job to develop this engine in the uh, the short time that uh, they had available to them. Briggs having a serious go at Crompton here in the battle for third position. In this first round of the 1989 Australian Gold Star Series. First ever race for Formula Holden. All the drivers are very keen to see this uh, new formula succeed. I believe cams have a very strong commitment to it. At the moment, I guess, if you're looking for the open wheel of formula for Australia, I guess it's got to be uh, Formula Ford. <laughs> um, and the Fords have shared that with Formula V. Now something with a little more grunt and go. And I wonder how these things uh, might sound, John, with the six into one pipe that they're talking about. I think that that's been the from the press mainly, Mike, as the uh, the criticism of the cars. When they do sound a little bit flat, and uh, maybe they could look at the exhaust system and maybe pick up the uh, the sound effect and make them sound a little bit more racy. Although I don't rather don't mind it. If you've ever listened to the sound of a flat six Porsche, it's the, uh, yep. the sound that they do make. But uh, I think that if it ever is a drawback, it's probably it with the actual engine. Uh, it was quite interesting yesterday at the press conference here, and one. Uh, of the scribes was getting down on the drivers a bit about the sound of the cars and I thought Bap Romano handed it beautifully he said does it sound flat and the guy said yes he said would you like to have a sit in it and see how it sounds when you're driving it that, that shut the guy up straight away and I reckon that'd be right too you know, it's, uh, the cars themselves would be a terrific thing to drive you know, they, they slip and slide around a little bit they're quite spectacular to watch live absolutely fantastic these two uh, Compton and Briggs are closing the gap a little on second place get a Peter Glover they're only about three seconds behind him now Glover just disappearing off the right of the screen there yes yeah, so I, I have a, a few doubts about Glover's physical ability he's, he's actually getting around the uh, pit, pit area on a walking stick so I'd say that he could be hurting quite a bit at the moment must have borrowed mine <laughs> race leader Mark McLaughlin still with a commanding lead at the stage and the interest is in the battle for the miners. This will be good. Actually, it's true. Yes. Crompton will be cursing. Crompton back. He's going to make a run again. <laughs> Got him again, too. It's a good race. Yep. In amongst some slower traffic, it was Peter Doolman. They just went past in car number 20, the second of the uh, TAFE College entries from 
in South Australia, Croydon Park. They were built here. What a phenomenal effort that is for the Tape College to build two of these cars. And they've got orders for a couple more, I understand. They're a fabulously built car. They're absolutely brilliant. And they're full marks to the tape. I reckon it's a great job. We've reached oh. about half distance at this stage in the race. 16 laps. We're running two heats today. The first one, of course, for uh, television. And whilst all the drivers really haven't had too much time to play and sort out their cars, we expect them to be far more competitive over the next couple of rounds where the Gold Star Championship runs in tandem with the Australian Touring Car title. Oops. 27 is around sideways. That's Elwyn Bickley in the roll. Those who have had a misadventure have been able to uh, recover and keep going. Oh, that's one of the good things about the Malala circuit. If you slide off, you can go all the way to Perth without hitting anything. Yeah, actually, that is the <laughs> most open circuit I've ever seen. And for spectating, it's terrific. It is great because you can pretty well see every corner on the circuit. Keep track of all the cars. The leader's gone across the start-finish line. The other thing about this, uh, Gary, is the uh, variety of chassis that are running around at this particular meeting. Uh, you've got a local car in Elfin leading it, and then you've got a, a lot of uh, European cars in uh, Rolls, uh, both the latest specification Formula 3000 cars uh, running closely behind it. Uh, I honestly think it, uh, it gives the local builders a, a good chance to uh, compare their wares with any of the imported cars coming in from overseas. You've got a uh, an Elfin leading and a local car, um, a, a Cheetah running second, followed by all the imports. Mark McLaughlin, the leader, has a six second advantage now over Peter Glover, with three seconds from Glover back to the scrap for third between John Briggs and Neil Compton. Yes, Glover. Peter Glover going through, down to the 13, then uh, Crompton getting a little closer. In fact, we've been following that uh, dice between uh, Crompton and Briggs. That really is the only dice in the race. At this moment, we've just been checking to uh, see whether or not we're going to have a dispute about third place. Unfortunate uh, for the TAFE College boys here in uh, Adelaide that uh, Arthur Abrahams, who qualified on the second row of the grid, uh, had a problem on the second lap and has not been cited since. And of course, the second entry, driven by Peter Doolman, didn't in fact qualify, started rear of the grid and has circulated in the same fashion. I think it's early days for this category, though, and uh, I can only see it uh, coming on and on to, to uh, being you know, probably one of the most competitive categories, uh, open wheeler categories, besides the Formula Ford. This will be great to see. We're waiting for the arrival of Formula Holden. There's the second, second place going through, Peter Glover. There's Neil Crompton, the car number seven, the Dulux uh, Auto Colour car. I think he's acquitted himself very well here today. I think he surprised a few people. I mean, we can cope with it. The viewers are going to put up with it later when he joins the touring car race. We have to get his mind back on the job. If he finishes in the placings here, we might never see him again for the rest of the day. He'll be lost with the trophy girl. Are we battling to get his helmet out of his, out of his helmet? <laughs> yeah. OK, third place still under dispute here as uh, Briggs closes up once again behind... Uh, Crompton. One thing I will say, they've turned out that uh, Dulux car just superbly really brought a little more colour into it. It's probably the best turned out car here. Oh, by a mile. Yeah. Maybe a slight steal of the Benetton uh, team, nevertheless. They're on pit straight now. As you can see, coming down to this very, very sharp right-hander. Easy to make a mistake on that corner. Crompton doesn't and sets it up for what they call the banana straight. There's the bend. Fastest part of the circuit. Mark McLaughlin still leading. Glover in second, Crompton third, Briggs is fourth and laps running out. Rowan Onslow back up to about fifth position after his spin. But McLaughlin doing it very, very comfortably in front and, in fact, increasing that lead. Yeah, he's just crossed the start-finish line. I got the clock on the gap back to uh, second place. It's 12 seconds. And still only three seconds back now to uh, Crompton Briggs. And Onslow's coming through the field like a whirlwind. He's back uh, into fifth position and closing very rapidly on this pair. So will see him come into shot shortly. He could catch them all napping. 
Laps are running out though. 16 laps the distance of the race. They're on lap number 12 at the moment. So four laps to go the next time around and uh, Onslow is really just catching them. There's Glover going through, Crofton, Briggs. And then you'll see the gap back to Onslow in the white number one car. Here he comes. That's a pretty good recovery because he spent a fair amount of time trying to get back on the track. That particular car is imported from Italy, actually. It's an RC30 uh, Rolf. It was, uh, used to run in the uh, Formula 3000 category in Europe for the Pavese team in, uh, in Italy. Just getting a bit tighter up for second and third at the moment. Actually, we could have a pretty good finish here. We could. Crompton's got a bit of a gap on uh, Briggs now. But he's gaining on Glover for second. Briggs trying to hang in there with them, and Onslow, of course, will be on Briggs' tail, uh, given another uh, lap. Well, about three laps remaining, so uh, he's going to get tight at the end. Arthur Abrahams missing in action, as is Bap Romano. John Briggs goes through and the Rold RT21. Melbourne Bickley was another who had a spin and we've not uh, seen too much of uh, Brett Fisher, Tony Blanch or Ray Cutty. They're uh, well back at the rear of the field. Once again, McLaughlin goes across the start finishing line. And he really does have a huge lead. Yes, Peter Glover. Crompton's now only 1.4 seconds behind Glover. Three laps to go. There's Glover going through. Maybe two laps to go. I just call that. Glover, car number 13. On lap number 14. And there's Crompton. Uh, there's the gap back. There's Crompton closing on Glover at this stage as they work their way down onto the back straight. That's the first time he's been able to catch a sight. Oh, there's a the slow car has got it interrupted what uh, could have been uh, an interesting challenge uh, the next time down the front straight. That's car 11, Ray Cutchie from Victoria. Last both. lap. And race leader Mark McLaughlin. Driving for Elfin Sports Cars, Tasmanian going away. He really has driven superbly in this race. Second fast qualifier. A lot of promise, I think, in this uh, category in the uh, next couple of months. Ab Smith. Absolutely. It, uh, I think it's for the first race of the category, it's been very good. Okay, McLaughlin's bolted out front, but you can't say the race for second place is exactly, uh, exactly dull. No, you're right there, John. Here comes our race leader down the back straight. Mark McLaughlin. Always get that confused. Our motorsport director has almost the same handle without the Mac. Heading down the back straight for the final time. Keeping a, a dice, an eye on the dice, still going on for the second. Coming to the S's now for the final time, the opening round of the Gold Star Series. And a boomer of this opener for Formula Holden. Mark McLaughlin goes across the line, hand in the air. A little bit of history created here at Malala this afternoon. Peter Glover still holding down second spot. Here's Glover and Crompton closing on him. So Peter Glover comes out and he'll get second in the Gold Star. And third place goes to Neil Crompton in the Dulux Auto Color Car. Briggs finishes back in fourth place. And Ray Cutchie spun out on the finish line. And fifth spot will go to Rowan Onslow. So, an interesting start to Formula Holden and the opening round of the 89 Gold Star Series here at Malala Raceway this afternoon. There is our race winner. Mark McLaughlin, let's have a look at all of you on the Celtics race score. Mark McLaughlin, our race winner. Peter Glover picks up second and Neil Crompton takes third. <laughs>